everyone, and welcome to English for You. I'm Erin, and I'm Seb. And today we are talking about a really interesting TV show. We are, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so this is a TV show that we'll be able to watch pretty soon. It's coming up here in Taiwan, and uh, mm-hmm. it's all about the Great Migration in mm-hmm. Africa. So, would you ever like to visit Africa? I actually would really like to visit mm. Africa. I have been thinking about going to East Africa. Okay. Recently, so mm. uh, Kenya, which mm. is one of the countries in today's program, yeah, and also uh, Uganda, because fun fact,、oh. my dad was born in Uganda. Interesting. So、um, I would really like to go there. You know, see、yeah. the nature, the、mm-hmm. gorillas. There's a、mm. lot of gorillas there. Yeah. Yeah. So I would definitely like to go to Africa. I would、mm-hmm. as well. In fact, I have friends who live in Africa and、mm-hmm. East Africa, and.、Oh. Um, And、uh, I have friends who are from Morocco and South Africa, and、oh, okay. so a trip to Africa is in my plans someday. Not、mm-hmm. at the moment, but I would like to sort of get to those places where my friends are, kind of see the culture. I've always wanted to go to Egypt, see、mm. the pyramids, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And、um, you know, I recently had a friend who visited Uganda. Actually, oh really? And, yep, she went on a safari and she saw、oh, lots of animals that we're、yes. going to talk about、mm-hmm. today in the wild. So she really loved that. So all of these people in these places making me jealous. Yes. And、uh, hopefully someday I can be there and do that and as experience well. Experience it for yourself. Exactly. All right. Well. All right. Well, first let's jump in then and take a look at the Great Migration. Hmm. Reading. The Great Migration. The Serengeti region of East Africa is vast. It's also the starting point for the Great Migration. This is when 1.3 million wildebeest travel some 650 kilometers. From Tanzania to Kenya and back. This year, Ben Fogel is going with them. On Animal Planet's The Great Migration, Ben follows the herds as they move. He also sees how the lives of other animals and humans are affected by the event. Ben starts off in a hot air balloon, getting a bird's eye view of the wildebeest. The migration starts off with babies. Twelve thousand wildebeest calves are born each day. The animals soon eat most of the grass they can find in the area, so they need to move in search of more food and water. Ben also meets the Hadzabi people. This group moves from place to place and hunts with bows and arrows. Later, Ben talks to the Maasai people. They're concerned because the rains are late this year. Like the wildebeest, they need water. The question is, when will it rain? All right. Let's get started on the first line、mm-hmm. of our article. Here it says, "The Serengeti region of East Africa、mm-hmm. is vast." We use the word "region" to talk about a large area of a country or of the a city or of the world, just a、mm-hmm. a large area of a place, without talking about how big the area is or what its borders actually are. So、mm-hmm. we're not talking about the limits. We're just kind of giving a general description of an area、mm-hmm. here. Now, the Serengeti region is an area of East Africa, and of course, the Serengeti National Park is a large area in the north of Tanzania. Tanzania. Tanzania,、oh, Tanzania、okay. is an African country, so、mm-hmm. there will be the region might include some other countries nearby, like Kenya is just north、mm-hmm. of Tanzania. But here we're we're kind of just talking about、um, maybe the national park. The national park. Yeah. Okay.、Mm-hmm. So, so within Tanzania's borders. Yeah. yeah.、Mm-hmm. So an example sentence of region could be: Do you know which regions of Taiwan oranges grow in? You know, I actually don't know the answer、mm, to that one. I think it's on the west coast, in、okay. sort of the valley of the mountains, the central mountains. Okay, so、yeah. near Taichung, maybe.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, so we we've learned that word region, but we also know that it is vast. Okay, vast is an adjective, and this is a good bit of vocabulary. We We use when we want to talk about places or areas of land、mm-hmm. because when an area is very vast, it's very. 
big, very wide, very spacious. That's right. So it's a very good word for talking about the Serengeti because mm -hmm. you know it is a it's a huge open plain right. uh, where we have all of these herding animals, the wildebeest, which we'll be talking about in a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can use vast to, to talk about other um, areas, the mm -hmm. uh, the Pacific Ocean, yes. for example. Mm -hmm. That's the Taiping Yang is vast. It's mm -hmm. a very big ocean. You could really say that about any ocean. Re yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's the biggest ocean. It is. Yes. <laughs> um, and the Sahara Desert. That's the Shahala Shamwa. Uh, that's also a very big, very vast area. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was actually looking when I was um, researching for mm -hmm. for this for this article. Uh, I was looking at the Sahara Desert mm -hmm. on Google Maps and mm -hmm. going, huh. Interesting. It is really a lot bigger than I thought. It is. It's the biggest <laughs> desert in the world. Yeah, very, very big. At, at the same time, I was mm -hmm. just like, no, just playing around on Google Maps. And I kind of <laughs> moved the maps down to Antarctica mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. realized how actually vast that is. It, so, yeah, very vast, mm -hmm. very vast. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, continuing on, we should learn about why we're looking at the Serengeti mm -hmm. today. It says here, it's also the starting point for the Great Migration. The Great Migration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the title of our article, and it's a pretty important word for today's article. So let's look at migration. This is what happens when a large group of animals or birds travels from one area of the world to another. Mm. So this is not very common in Taiwan, except for maybe its many butterfly species. But mm -hmm. on large land masses like North America and Africa, this happens all the time. So two of Canada's most famous migrations are the monarch butterflies. Mm -hmm. Those are the orange and black ones. They oh, fly okay. from yes. Canada mm -hmm. to Mexico. Oh, that's, and, that's far. Uh, yeah, mm. and of course it's reindeer, the mm. the kind of deer-like animals that live in the north. They do a great migration twice a year. Ah, uh, okay, mm -hmm. as the snow comes yep. in and out. I yep. see, I see. So this is when, so we're talking about the great migration again. Mm -hmm. This is when 1.3 million wildebeest travel some 650 kilometers from Tanzania to Kenya and back. Okay, very long distance there. Mm -hmm. But we also saw some grammar. Uh, we, it's, it's a noun clause with when. Okay, so uh, this is, to repeat, this is when 1.3 million wildebeest travel from Tanzania to Kenya. So a clause, as you know, is just any group of words that has a subject and a verb. So for example, Harry met Sally is a clause. It's an independent clause because it works as a sentence. We can just say that on its own and that is a sentence. But what about noun clauses? Well, noun clauses include a subject verb and also a conjunction, which is a word like uh, what, who, when, which, that, whoever. There's there's a lot of them. We don't mm -hmm. need to say them all. Right. But uh, noun clauses are not independent clauses. We can't say them on their own as a sentence. We can't say when Harry met Sally, period, end of sentence, because when Harry met Sally, what? You know, what happens it's, next? It's not a finished idea. It's not a finished idea. Right. Instead, we use noun clauses inside a sentence to add information when a single noun or word wouldn't be enough. Mm -hmm. What's more, they can appear almost anywhere in the sentence. They can be the subject, the object, object complement, subject complement, or even the preposition of a sentence. Confused? Well, that's it's it's a it's confusing normal. idea. Yeah. It's a lot of information. <laughs> so let's take a look at a few examples mm -hmm. to really nail this this down. Okay, so here's an example of a noun clause as a subject. Mm -hmm. What Harry said made Sally cry. So the subject is the thing that Harry said, but mm -hmm. maybe we don't know what it is, or maybe we've already said it. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to repeat that there. So we have what Harry said made Sally cry. Okay, let's have an object, an example of it being the object of a sentence would be Harry didn't know why Sally didn't want to speak to him. Okay, so now we're talking about the things that he didn't know. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe we don't know what that is, right. or we've already said it. So there's a couple of other ways we could use it. Mm -hmm. Harry's problem was that he couldn't get Sally to go out with him. So now we're describing his problem, which mm -hmm. is the subject. Mm -hmm. And lastly, an object complement. So Harry was happy that Sally wanted to meet him. Okay, okay so he was happy, that's the object, mm -hmm. and we're explaining 
why、right. he was happy. So、okay. there's the compliment. Okay, so it's a lot of information,、mm-hmm. but you will be doing this a lot. Yes. Just know that we are looking for those question words, those、mm-hmm. conjunctions, which normally say when a noun clause is starting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's continue moving on in the article. We did say that the wildebeest travel some six hundred and fifty kilometers.、Mm-hmm. Now, a kilometer is a word that we use to talk about distance and length. We measure long distances in kilometers usually, or in some parts of the world, like in the U.S., they use miles to measure distance.、Mm-hmm. Now, the prefix kilo, K-I-L-O. Means one thousand, so kilometer means one thousand meters.、Mm-hmm. All right, so here's an example sentence. I did a thirteen-kilometer hike on my recent trip to Japan. It was long, but I really enjoyed it. Wow, that was a lot of stuff in one sentence,、yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so our next sentence,、mm-hmm. luckily, is a little bit easier. Yes, it is. This year, Ben Fogel is going with them. So, okay,、uh, Ben Fogel is a British TV presenter.、Mm-hmm. Uh, he does a lot of adventures. So okay, he's climbed Everest. Oh wow, he's rowed across the Atlantic. That's way too fit. It's way too fit. <laughs> it is.、Yeah. It took him a month actually to do that.、So. It would take me years. Years.、That's、yeah, exactly. That's why I fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we all fly. Yeah. Anyway, so he. He's going with them. He's following the Great Migration. Okay,、mm-hmm. so he's going to be following the wildebeest. Now,、yes. the wildebeest are kind of like、um, like a big buffalo type animal. Type, yes, yeah, yes. they they're not a buffalo, but they look sort of similar、mm-hmm. to a buffalo,、um, and they. Are in big big groups, which we're going to find out here about.、Mm-hmm. Uh, in this sentence, it says, "On animal planets, the Great Migration, Ben follows the herds as they move." Now, a herd is a group of animals like buffalo, wildebeest, cows. That live and feed together. Now, herd here is something called a collective noun. It's used to describe a certain group of animals. There are many different collective nouns, but、mm. herd is usually used for big ones like the ones listed above: buffalo, wildebeest, beast, cows, that sort of thing. Some other collective nouns are flock, school, band, and pride. These are、mm-hmm. quite common: a flock of geese, a school of fish,、um, a pride of lions. A pride. Of lions,、mm-hmm. or here's my favorite、mm-hmm. one. Did you know a parliament of owls? I do. I、yeah. actually really like <laughs> collective nouns. So there's actually some、mm-hmm. really interesting collective nouns out there. You can go and research them and on actually, Google. So many that most native speakers don't, don't know, know them. them. All. Yeah, yeah, there's too many collective、mm-hmm. nouns. My favorite is the gaggle of geese. Oh, gaggle! Of, yeah, that、mm-hmm. one is quite funny. Yeah, or a murder of crows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so again, <laughs> back to our article. <laughs>、yes. So Ben Fogel also sees. So he also sees how the lives of other animals and Humans are affected by the event. Okay,、mm. so by the Great Migration.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have another example of a noun clause here. By the way, it's an object here too. He sees how the animals and humans are affected. Right. Okay.、Mm-hmm. You'll see a lot of these around、mm-hmm. noun clauses. Anyway, we also saw the word affect, which is a verb. And when something affects something else, it influences or changes it in some way. The event, the Great Migration, that is, affects the lives of many humans and animals. It changes or it influences. The way that other animals and humans live,、mm-hmm. but other things can affect us. The bad weather affected my plans to go to the beach. My plans to the beach had to change because of the weather.、Mm. That happens all the time、It、in、does. Taiwan. Yes, yes. And also, it's worth noting that affect can also be a noun. It sounds like it's the same word, doesn't、mm-hmm. it? Affect with an a, right? A f f e c t is a verb.、Mm-hmm. Something affects something, but an affect a noun starts with an e, not an、mm. a. The tricky thing is with most native speakers, you can't hear the difference between、right. the two.、Mm-hmm. The effects of the Great Migration can be seen throughout Tanzania and Kenya. So there, we're using the、right. noun form.、Mm-hmm. Here's a quick example with the verb form, though. My decision to move to Taiwan. Affected my life in many different ways. A big decision、mm-hmm. like that always does. It does. It does indeed. All right. Well, let's see how Ben is going to follow the wildebeests. It says here, Ben starts off in a hot air balloon,、mm-hmm. getting a bird's eye view of the wildebeest. 
Mm-hmm. All right. So we have the phrase "start off here." Now, when you start off, you begin to do something in a certain way.、Mm-hmm. Now, we use this phrase to show that you probably won't continue to do things this way, and that you'll change what you're doing after a certain point. So、mm-hmm. Ben will start watching the animals from a hot air balloon, but he'll continue his explorations another way later. He won't stay in the balloon the whole time.、Mm-hmm. Another example: you can start off working at this. Desk, but we might move you to another spot later. And we also saw the phrase "bird's eye view" there.、Mm-hmm. So he takes a balloon up into the sky for a bird's eye view of what's going on. But what kind of view is this? Well, that's going to be our pocket phrase go for、mm-hmm. today. So let's jump over and check that out. Pocket phrase go. A whole new world. Wow! 不晓得呢，你有没有看过我的电影《阿拉丁》？哎呀，我永远记得呢，我跟茉莉在飞毯上浪漫对唱情歌的那一幕。那时候我们多年轻，多可爱，乘着魔毯鸟看着美丽的城市夜景哦。We had a bird's eye view of the city while riding the magic carpet. 乘在魔毯上呢，就可以鸟看整个城市。小鸟呢，都是在天上飞的。所以想象一下，小鸟能够看到的一定呢，比我们在地上看到的更多、更宽广。所以呢 ，bird's eye view 就表示鸟看、俯视。例如呢，我们在魔毯上飞的时候，或者是呢 ，go to the top of the Taipei 101 to get a bird's eye view of Taipei。如果呢你想要俯瞰台北，就要爬到台北一零一上面去喽。Bird's eye view 这个片语应该很好记吧？ All right, welcome back. So we have Ben up in a hot air balloon, looking down on the wildebeest like he's a bird.、Mm-hmm. He's not a bird; just got the same view as a bird. Yes. The let's continue on to see what、um, he's seeing here. It says、mm-hmm. the migration starts off with babies. Twelve thousand wildebeest calves are born each day. That is a lot, <laughs> a of, lot of wildebeest born each day.、Mm-hmm. So we can imagine how big. This herd is if、mm-hmm. there are that many babies coming every day. We use the word calf or calves there. It's spelled a bit differently in the plural、mm-hmm. um, to talk about wildebeest babies. Now, a calf is a baby animal, usually of a larger species like an elephant, cow, or wildebeest. Now, some other animals that have babies that are called calves are hippos,、mm-hmm. giraffes. Dolphins, whales, deer, and rhinos. So,、mm. different kinds of animals, but all usually very big animals. So the animals soon eat most of the grass they can find in the area. I mean, of course, because、mm-hmm. if there's twelve thousand babies, yep, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of grass. It is a lot. So they need to move in search of more food and water. Okay, so we've got in search of there. That、mm-hmm. is an adverbial phrase, which is a little phrase that we use kind of like an adverb,、mm-hmm. and when When we are in search of something, we are looking for it.、Right. So the wildebeest are looking for、mm-hmm. more food. Right. So an example for in search of is、mm-hmm. the police went out in search of the missing child. Mm. Mm. Okay. Ben is out of the hot air balloon、mm-hmm. now. He is meeting some people, not、mm-hmm. the animals. It says、mm-hmm. Ben also meets the Hadzabe people.、Mm-hmm. This group moves from place to place and hunts with bows and arrows.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so the Hadzabe people move from ta- place to place. When we move from place to place, we go to a number of places,、mm-hmm. such as normally as part of a long or continuing journey. Okay,、right. so we can actually replace place in that、mm-hmm. phrase with、um, some other words. We、mm-hmm. could say move from town to town、mm-hmm. if you're going from one town to another、right. for some reason, or move from country to country.、Mm. Some people do that if they do a lot of business travel,、right. a lot of meetings in、mm-hmm. different cities. They、yeah. might travel from city to city or、mm-hmm. country to country, or from house to house.、Mm-hmm. So an example of this would be the beggar went from person to person asking for spare change. Mm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yes. All right. Well, we also saw that the Hadzabe people are hunting. They're moving、mm-hmm. from different. Places. Places to hunt. Now, when you hunt, you chase after something in order to catch it and kill it.、Mm-hmm. Now, often this is done in order to catch food to eat.、Mm-hmm. Animals, of course, hunt other animals to eat, like、mm-hmm. lions hunting wildebeests. Humans also hunt animals for food.
food, but sometimes hunting is done as a sport. We yeah. often hear of people going to Africa to hunt for large animals like lions and rhinos, which、mm-hmm. has been a big thing in the news recently.、Mm-hmm. There are it's illegal where、and、it is. Be. <laughs> it, well, it depends.、Mm-hmm. I mean, there are certain situations, but、mm-hmm. there are varying opinions of it.、Mm-hmm. It is sometimes legal. It is sometimes illegal. And、uh, you guys can go and do research on that on your own, and and find out more about it. But we need to give an example sentence for hunt.、Yes. So my dad likes to hunt for deer during the summer. He goes into the forest for a week until he catches one. That's better than hunting a rhino, though. We can、um, agree on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean,、mm-hmm. he would have a license to do it, and in yes, Canada,、uh, there are、yeah. too many deer sometimes, so、mm-hmm. they actually like some it, people. It to does. Do it. it does depend on the animal. Right.、It、does depend on the animal.、Mm-hmm. Anyway, they were hunting with bows. Okay, I don't think your uncle hunts with bows. No.、Though. No, a bow is an old-fashioned weapon you shoot arrows out of. So bows are normally quite simple. They're made out of a long piece of wood,、mm-hmm. uh, and the ends of that wood are held. In a curve, or in a bend, by a tight piece of string, so it kind of looks like a D shape. Yeah. Yes. And to fire the bow or shoot the bow, we put an arrow against the string and、mm-hmm. pull the string back and let it go. So、mm. then it shoots through the air, shoot into something. Right. So the act of doing this, or the sport,、mm-hmm. which.、Uh, Revolves around this、mm-hmm. action is called archery.、Mm-hmm. So in archery, you shoot with a bow and arrow.、Mm-hmm. And if you are practicing archery, you、mm-hmm. are an archer. Okay.、Mm-hmm. So those are a couple of words you can use with your bow and、mm-hmm. your arrow. But an example sentence of bow is: John made a homemade bow out of an old tree branch and a long piece of string.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So he's. Met the Hadzabe people.、Mm-hmm. They kind of move around with the wildebeest. It says here later Ben talks to the Maasai people.、Mm-hmm. Yes, they're concerned because the rains are late this year. Right. Okay, concerned. So when we're concerned about something, we are worried about it. In the、mm-hmm. article, the fact that the rain hasn't fallen yet could mean that the animals the Maasai hunt don't come near them,、mm-hmm. or maybe they can't get clean water to drink.、Mm-hmm. Either way, you need water and. The fact that they don't have it means that the Maasai are concerned about、right. what will happen. So, two forms of this adjective,、uh, similar to、uh, excited and mm-hmm. exciting, mm-hmm. are concerned and concerning. So, how we feel、uh, when we are worried about something、mm-hmm. is concerned.、Mm-hmm. So, we are concerned about something because we are worried about what、mm-hmm. will happen. But if something is making us worried, we can call it concerning. Right. So, a concerning problem, for example.、Mm-hmm. So, when you talk about the people. The people you use the concerned.、Mm-hmm. I feel concerned, but when you talk about the thing, you use ing concerning. So、yes. the weather is concerning. Yes, mostly、yeah. in that case.、Mm-hmm. Unless, for example, you have a daughter who's been getting in trouble with the police.、Mm-hmm. You know, you could talk about that being a bit concerning because、mm-hmm. you are worried about her. Right. Well, you would、yes. say that's her behavior. Her behavior is right. Con- that, of course, yeah. yeah her behavior is concerning.、Mm-hmm. Our example for concerned is after seeing his grades, Thomas became concerned about whether he would get into college. Oh.、Mm. All right. Well, like the Maasai, the Maasai people need water, but they're not the only. Only、mm-hmm. things or people. It says, like the wildebeest,、mm-hmm. they need water. The question is, when will it rain?、Mm-hmm. Interesting. All、yes. right. Well, we are going to end on that question、mm-hmm. here. We have a question of our own to talk about, so let's get to that in our for you chat. For you chat. Okay, so our for you chat question for today、mm-hmm. is: What kinds of events do you think affect animals in Taiwan? Well, I think the biggest one that affects animals in Taiwan is the amount of development、uh, that of happens、yes. in their habitats. So,、mm-hmm. moving into sort of the mountainous areas to make hotels or build、mm-hmm. hotels or office buildings and stuff like、mm-hmm. that, we've seen actually really big problems of this affecting the Formosan bear、mm-hmm. and. And、uh, mm-hmm. the leopard cat, which hasn't been seen in years, there's been some some presumed sightings of a leopard cat recently, but some people think it wasn't real.、Mm-hmm. So that's still kind of a, a contested issue.、Mm-hmm. But、um, obviously, we are taking the land of the animals away. 
with mm-hmm. our construction and movement into those areas. So that's a pretty big one. It's the biggest cause of uh, animals oh, yeah. going extinct, mm-hmm. isn't it? Habitat yeah. loss. Habitat yeah. loss. All right. Well, that mm-hmm. is one. We don't really have the time to talk about more, but that no. leaves mm-hmm. plenty of issues for you to talk about for animals in Taiwan and mm-hmm. what kind of events might affect them. It doesn't have to be wild animals. It could be like the law that affected stray dogs and oh, cats course, yeah. in, mm-hmm. in, in animal shelters and stuff like that. These are all things that you guys can talk about. Maybe you guys can come up with some solutions, but we are Mm, out of time. You need solutions for problems. Mm -hmm, Exactly. Anyway, join us tomorrow when we're going to be continuing Mm -hmm. on our journey with the Make Great Migration, the Make Migration. Um, (laughs) But for now, I'm Seb. And I'm Erin. And we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. The Great Migration. The Serengeti region of East Africa is vast. It's also the starting point for the Great Migration. This is when 1.3 million wildebeest travel some 650 kilometers from Tanzania to Kenya and back. This year, Ben Fogel is going with them. On Animal Planet's The Great Migration, Ben follows the herds as they move. He also sees how the lives of other animals and humans are affected by the event. Ben starts off in a hot air balloon getting a bird's eye view of the wildebeest. The migration starts off with babies. 12,000 wildebeest calves are born each day. The animals soon eat most of the grass they can find in the area, so they need to move in search of more food and water. Ben also meets the Hadzabi people. This group moves from place to place and hunts with bows and arrows. Later, Ben talks to the Maasai people. They're concerned because the rains are late this year. Like the wildebeest, they need water. The question is, when will it rain? Vocabulary Review Region The southern region of the country has received little rain this year. Kilometer My apartment is only half a kilometer from the closest MRT station, so it's an easy walk. Effect Things that happen in one country can often affect people in another because everyone is so connected now. Hunt Some people in Taiwan still hunt deer in the forests, but not many. Bow It takes a lot of strength and skill to hit a target using a bow and arrow. Concerned Paul's mother was concerned when he didn't come home at the usual time. Ling